Hello everyone and welcome to the game engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Previously we created a cache buffer which we can use to cache all information that the GPASS module needs while rendering the scene. Today we are going to fill this cache with data and also finish writing the depth prepass and GPASS render functions in the low level renderer. We start by writing this function, which basically just populates the GPASS cache with data. First, we assert that we have valid pointers to frame info and the camera. We also check that we have a pointer to render item IDs and at least one item to render. Then we get a reference to the cache and clear it. I'll put this using namespace here, because we are going to call a couple of functions from the content namespace. The first step is to get a list of low-level render IDs. Remember that each high-level render item may have one or more low-level render items. This list of low-level render item IDs represents every submesh that's going to be rendered during this frame. Therefore, we can use it to resize the cache buffer. We call get items with the array of render items and the number of items, which will effectively fill in the render item related arrays in the cache. We can use the array of submesh GPU IDs to fill in the views cache next. Similarly, we use the array of material IDs to get the materials cache array items. This is almost everything we need to do to fill in the GPASS cache. Let's try and build the engine. Here I made a typo in the return type of the clear function in GPASS cache. Obviously it doesn't return anything, so it should be void. I also made a typo here, it should be per object data. And here we are trying to assign integers to floating point values. We can typecast this explicitly or just change the type in global shader data to be integer as well. Let's go with the latter for now. In the last video, I renamed the pipeline state object pointers in the items cache and need to update them whenever they are used in a code. Now we also have to pass an instance of frame info when we call surface render function. For now, let's just pass a default constructed instance. Okay, we got rid of the build errors and now we can continue writing the depth prepass function. The next function will get the per object data for each render item and write it to the constant buffer so it can be accessed by the GPU. It will also put the GPU virtual address of each constant buffer allocation into the array of per object data pointers in the GPASS cache. First, we get the number of low level render items. Because more than one item could belong to the same geometry and therefore to the same game entity, we can use the same per object data for groups of render items from the same game entity. This way we can save space in the constant buffer that would otherwise have been wasted. To do this, we remember what the current entity ID is and as long as the entity IDs in the cache are the same as the current one, we can use the same pointer for the per object data in the constant buffer.
In order to get the per object data in the first place, we do need to have some way of getting transform matrices for each game entity. Currently, we don't have a function to call for this, so we need to add it. We can start by adding the matrices in the transform component that will be returned when we call this function. These are the model to world transform matrix and its inverse. We also add a byte array that's used to find out which entities have their transform matrices already calculated. Remember that whenever position, rotation, or scale components are changed, the transform matrices have to be recalculated. When we create a transform component, we need to make room for one more item in these arrays. Now we can write a function that returns the world and inverse world transform matrices. It takes an entity ID and it copies the matrices to the locations we referred to in the function parameters. Before copying the matrices, we check if they need to be recalculated. When that's the case, we call another function to do so. Here we use a directx math function to construct an affine transform matrix. I did briefly discuss affine transformations in this video in case you'd like to know more about this. Anyway, this function takes the position, rotation quaternion and the scale of the entity and returns a model to world matrix which we then store in the corresponding array. We can also compute the inverse of this matrix and store it. Finally, we set the hasTransform flag to indicate that the transform matrices are up to date. Returning to the function for per object data, we can now get the world and inverse world matrices. The last matrix that we need is world view projection matrix, which we can get simply by multiplying the world matrix with the view projection matrix of the camera. Now that we have all matrices, we can allocate a chunk of the constant buffer and copy the per object data. At the end, we use the current per object data pointer to get the GPU virtual address of the buffer for each render item. 
As I mentioned, as long as the items have a common game entity, they can use the same pointer which saves space in the buffer. Now we are ready to write the rest of depth prepass function. After filling in the frame cache, we loop through all render items and set the graphics root signature if it's different from the one that was already set. When we set a new root signature, we must also set the root parameters to go with it. We can already set the global shader data as a root constant buffer view. This root parameter doesn't change for each render item, and we need to set it once when we set a different root signature. Next, we set the pipeline state object. Same as root signatures, we only set PSOs if they differ from the one that's currently set. We can continue by setting the root parameters that change per render item. For example, the root parameters could be different depending on material type. For now, we only have to set the position buffer, element buffer, and the per object constant buffer. Before setting the index buffer, we calculate the index count by dividing the buffer size by 2 or 4, depending on the index format. Then we set the index buffer and primitive topology for this render item in the cache. Finally, we can call draw indexed instance for the number of indices that we just calculated. This is all for depth prepass. The code for the render function is almost identical, so we can copy and paste this code. The reason that I'm not refactoring this is that I expect these two functions to diverge in the future, which means that they will have rather different content. For now, the only part that we need to change is using gpass pipeline state object instead of the depth PSO. This is all for GPASS module. Let's compile the project and correct build errors if any. Here I need to rename this enumeration and we are ready to continue. In order to render our 3D model, we need to actually write some shader code here for transforming the vertices and outputting a pixel color. However, I think it's better to make sure that we can run the test program at all before writing this shader code. 
As you can see, we can't run the application right now, and I'd like to start the next video with fixing the issues that prevent us from running the test application. We'll write the vertex and pixel shaders in the next video as well, and hopefully you will get to see the first image that's rendered by our very own super duper game engine. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time, until then take care and happy game engineering!